With the Google Pixel tablet, Google has once again launched its own tablet after many years of silence. We get a two-in-one device here, but unlike usual, it's not a tablet and laptop in one device, but a tablet and smart display. That's why a dock is included. Nevertheless, starting at $499, it has to compete with the Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 and Apple iPad Air. Which one is better for whom? That's what you will learn in this review. And we will start with the design and build quality. I think it looks like a typical Google device. Comes in porcelain and hazel colors and has a Google logo on the back. While the case is all metal, it's covered in a soft coating that reduces fingerprints. It's relatively thick at 8.1 millimeters, but the weight of 493 grams is okay. Unfortunately, both the headphone jack and the micro SD card reader are missing and the version with a SIM card slot in LTE is also not available. On the other hand, it's great that the fingerprint reader is integrated into the power button. That's a standard in this price range. It can either be charged via the dock or via a USB-C charger. However, a USB charger and cable are not included. It's a USB-C 3.2 port to which you can usually also connect external monitors. I tried that. But it seems like the software does not recognize one. And since an optional keyboard cover is also missing, I'm guessing that Google just does not see it as a tablet for getting work done. The front and rear cameras both have a resolution of 8 megapixels and I think the quality of both cameras is quite good. The front camera is very wide angle, which is also the trend on Apple and Samsung devices. What I think is really cool is that you can take photos in RAW format and thus edit your pictures better in apps like Lightroom. I think it's the only tablet where that's possible. But it's a tablet and if you spend $499 on the Google Pixel tablet, you will usually have a smartphone with a better camera. I don't think anyone will take important pictures with this tablet in real life, but it's still cool that the raw format is supported. The charging dock for the Google Pixel tablet is included and you can buy more for $130. Ideally, you would have a dock in the living room, bedroom and kitchen. Well, Google would love that for sure. The tablet is magnetically connected to the dock and then charged. However, it's not only a charging dock, but also a built-in speaker. When you connect the tablet to the dock, it turns it into a smart display with Google Assistant as the interface. And then you can use the tablet just like other Google smart displays, ask it for the weather or recipes, listen to music, watch movies and so on. The tablet speakers alone are good, but not outstanding. For example, the sound is a bit louder than on the Apple iPad 10, but sounds then distorted slightly. And the Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 offers a noticeably better sound. However, that changes with the charging dock. Together with that, the sound is better than on any tablet. No wonder since its speakers are also much bigger than on any tablet. Let's move on to the display. The Google Pixel tablet has an 11 inch display and it's a normal LCD. With 2560 by 1600 pixels, the resolution is high, so text, photos and icons look nice and sharp. And in general, it's a nice display that renders colors well and at 500 nits is bright enough to see things well outdoors. Even when it's very bright. Only the iPad Pro has a brighter display. The screen is very similar to the iPad Air, which is also fully laminated and only supports 60Hz just like the Google. In fact, I noticed a slight jelly or rolling shutter effect, but it's not as strong as on some other 60Hz tablets like the iPad mini. At 120Hz, this effect disappears and the Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 and iPad Pro have such a 120Hz display. Also, the Samsung S8 display is a bit more saturated. It's important to mention the Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 as an alternative to the Google Pixel tablet because the two currently cost about the same. Google does include the dock, but Samsung includes the excellent S Pen. And Google does not offer its own pen for the Pixel tablet so far. However, it actually supports USI 2 pens. These are the pens that also work with many Chrome OS tablets, such as the Lenovo Duet 3 Chromebook. And the Amazon Fire Max 11 also supports such a pen. And that means that the pens for the Lenovo and Amazon tablet also work with the Google Pixel tablet. I've already tested a few tablets with USI 2 pens and what I said with those also applies here. The pens work well. You can write down clear handwritten notes and also draw quite well with them. However, Samsung's S Pen and Apple's a Pencil are always a bit more precise and react faster in a direct comparison. Therefore, the Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 or Apple iPad Air 
are a much better choice if you are specifically looking for a tablet with a good pen. If you only need a stylus occasionally, the Pixel tablet is good enough. The Google Pixel tablet is equipped with the Google Tensor G2 processor, which they developed together with Samsung. In addition, there is 8GB of RAM and 128 or 256GB 2 of internal storage, depending on the version. As mentioned, there is no version with LTE or 5G. Although the Google Pixel tablet performs better than the Xiaomi Pad 6 and Lenovo Tab P11 Pro Gen 2 in the Geekbench 5 benchmark comparison, it is a bit weaker than the one-year-old Samsung Galaxy Tab S8. At the same time, it's significantly weaker than current iPads. The 3D Mark White Lab test, which has graphics performance for games in particular, shows exactly the same. It ranks between the Samsung S8 and the two Xiaomi and Lenovo tablets. So it's more of an upper mid-range or lower premium tablet, but definitely not a top performer. In my gaming test it performs well. You can play PUBG Mobile with Ultra HD graphics, which is just as good as on the flagships of other manufacturers. Genshin Impact also runs decently with high graphics settings. However, the benchmark test also showed that the Pixel tablet does not play in the highest league, so it might not be able to play all new games with the highest settings in the future. The Pixel tablet runs Android 13 out of the box and according to the product page it's supposed to receive 4 years of security updates. However, it's not mentioned how long major version updates will be available. Still, it's great to know that security updates will be released for 5 years. In fact, the Pixel tablet does not run pure Android but the interface is slightly customized. So there's a dock at the bottom which can also be brought out at any time within each app. A Pixel Clock and a Google TV widget are pre-installed by default on the home screen. And every Android tablet supports the Google Assistant anyway. However, it's worth mentioning that when you connect the tablet to the dock, a new home screen is displayed for use as a smart display. This can be for instance a clock, the weather, an art gallery, your Google photo gallery and a weather frog. Quite interestingly, it's also capable of serving as a Google Chromecast receiver, so you can use your phone to play content via Chromecast with the tablet, just as if it were a Chromecast enabled TV. In my battery test, the Google Pixel tablet got a runtime of 7.15 hours and considering that the display is bright, this is a good result. For this test, I always run an HD YouTube video at maximum brightness in an endless loop. So, is the Google Pixel tablet a good tablet? It has lots of good features. The display is pretty bright and has a high resolution and supports good USI 2 pens. We get a metal case with the fingerprint reader and the performance is good enough for all games, at least for now. It's really exciting especially if you want not only a tablet but also a smart display. The dock speakers are better than from any tablet alone. However, the Google tablet is quite expensive with an MSRP of $499. And compared to the Samsung Galaxy Tab S8, which is already a year old, the performance is rather disappointing. The optional pens are worse than the S Pen, the S8 supports 120Hz instead of just 60Hz and has better standalone speakers. And Google is not ahead in software either, as Samsung is surprisingly good with updates, has outstanding features for the S Pen and pretty cool features like Samsung DeX. The Google Pixel tablet is a good tablet and I really enjoyed using it. But due to the high price, I can only really recommend it if you also want a smart display with extra speakers. If you're mainly looking for a tablet, and would only use the dock as a charging dock, then I think the Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 or Apple iPad Air are a much better choice.